they have discussed about how to derive load vectors for parallelogram in that yesterday we derived one expression that is load vector due to body force for the bar element now today we will extend our derivation now today we will go with load vector load vector vector due to due to traction force traction force that is for bar element that is for bar element i think already we had discussed bar element all those things okay now first go for representing your bar element what is bar element a two noted element okay locate node one node two I represent your displacement q1 q2 now zeta will vary from minus one to zeta will be equal to plus one then from origin to node one we know that x1 take from origin to node that is x2 okay then in between the distances x2 minus x1 that we can read as the length of the element length of the element to derive your load vector i think yesterday we discussed basic requirement to derive any expression in this chapter is pi is equals to strain energy plus work potential we know that strain energy will give you stiffness matrix work potentials will give the load vectors now only i represent already we derived your stiffness matrix and load vector i represent all the terms of your work potential first term we know that in work potential is minus volume integral u transpose f into dv minus surface integral u transpose t into ds minus summation of ui transpose into pl now i started we have derived expression that is load vector due to body force we use this expression and we have derived it now today what we are doing we are doing traction force now in this work potential the traction force term is this now i will use that term to derive your uh, traction force vector due to Uh, sorry, load vector due to traction force in your bar element. Now consider a traction force term that is U suffix T will be equal to equal to write on the top surface integral U transpose T into dS U transpose T into dS. Take this as equation number one. Take this as equation number one. Now in this. first convert this is a surface integral convert to line integral now i'll replace this by line integral u transpose i'll keep it as it is t i'll keep it as it is ds i will change into t into dx t into dx now i'll assume a unit thickness or thickness is negligible okay i'll make this line integral u transpose t into dx this is what the expression first now this This expression once again I'll rewrite here. That is what is the expression we obtain. That is u suffix t will be equal to line integral u transpose u transpose u transpose t into dx. Now same previous previous had your derivation. First dx is in global coordinate system. If you take u u we know that what is u u is equal to n q that is for bar element n one. Q1 plus N2 Q2, or you can write this in this format also. N1 N2 Q1 Q2. We know what is N1 N2 for bar element. Okay, N1 is equal to one minus zeta by two. N2 is equal to one plus zeta by two. This is shear function for bar element. But dx is the I want to convert the limit is varying from minus one to plus one. Now if I want to convert it first, I want to change dx into d zeta. For that, we know the relation between natural and global coordinate system. That is zeta equals to two into x minus x one divided by x two minus x one minus one. If you differentiate this, d zeta by dx, you are going to get two by l. I think this already we discussed. We know that dx is equals to l by two into L by two into d zeta. Now bring this and bring this into this expression. What happens if you see u t will be equal to 
Now limits will be changes to minus 1 to plus 1 because I am replacing dx by d by 2 into d zeta because zeta will vary from minus 1 to plus 1. Ut that is n into q transpose n into q transpose okay e into t into le by 2 into d zeta this is like this. Now to transpose that is u is equals to minus 1 to plus 1 n q transpose t l e by 2 into d zeta. Now from this just observe here now fragment it now u suffix t that is minus 1 to plus 1. Now this can be done like this this can be done like this. Now what is common I will keep it q transpose n transpose l e by 2 into t into d zeta into d zeta now this can be this can be made like this q transpose minus 1 to plus 1 t l e by 2 into n transpose into d zeta this can be made it like this q transpose into t e q transpose into t e now this can be now take it t e will be equal to minus 1 to plus 1 you know why i written this because q is an independent parameter all are independent parameters now take all the independent parameters t l e by 2 into n transpose into d zeta now this will be written as t l e by 2 minus 1 to plus 1 n transpose into d zeta you know what is n transpose t l e by 2 what is n transpose write n in column manner what is that value 1 minus zeta by 2 1 plus zeta by 2 into d zeta common is of ticket of outside tle by 4 now integrate what is the integration of 1 zeta integration of minus is zeta square by 2 now similar integration of 1 is zeta plus zeta square by 2 limit is minus 1 to plus 1 now previous derivation also we have done this how to apply your limits just go for applying your limits and back side i'll do it this now Take your limits first, T L E, that is you know that T L E by 2, now limits, sorry, T L E by 4, T L E by 4, limits is zeta and minus zero square by 2 is that first I'll apply upper limit, 1 minus half, minus half, minus 1, now uh, minus 1, then this is minus half. Similarly, here apply your limit, 1 okay then plus of minus of minus 1 plus this is what you have to apply your limits you can get it now if you solve this tle by 4 you are going to get minus of minus minus plus of it will cancel that is it will be 2 it will be 2 now take 2 common it will be tle by 2 into 1 1 now this will be called it as a traction load vector for traction force load vector due to traction force for bar element now three terms are there first we have determined one as load vector due to your body force load vector due to traction force and one more term is the point load point load vector point load vector See the concept of load vector is to convert your whatever the force acting on your body into nodal values. Nodal values. Now this is a surface force and earlier what we discussed body force. But when you take with respect to point load vector, point load means a particular it is acting at a particular point, particular uh, particular point. Okay. Because of this, for this we don't have any derivation. But generally what we can directly express is the point load vector. P will be equal to, we can write, for example, if we take a simple one element, P1, P2, or we can sometimes, in some textbooks, we can write F1, F2, or it will go on, depending upon number of nodes. But if you take a simple element, it is P1, P2, F1, F2, because we have only two nodes for a simple element. If two nodes is there, what is the load, point load acting at node 1, what is the point load acting at node 2? This is called your point load vector. When you come to traction force also, you see you have done the same thing. You are converting whatever the force acting over on a surface, you are converting that force into a point load. For example, TLE by 2. See, TLE by 2, TLE by 2. The meaning of this is TLE by 2 is the value which is acting at node 1. 
Similarly, TLE by 2, one more TLE by 2 is a value that is acting at node 2. Similarly, in your body force also, this is the concept. That means, if a force is acting on a body, you should convert that forces into nodal values. Nodal values, because we know that in FEM concept, we are going to determine the solution at the nodal point. Solution at the nodal points. Thank you.